All right, welcome back, class. Um, now we're going to shift our attention to reviewing the process of graphing elliptical equations. So write down uh, the title for the notes. Uh, this is going to be entitled Review Notes on Review Notes on Graphing Ellipses. Graphing Ellipses. Okay. All right, so uh, to do this, first thing we're going to do is consider the following example, review example, so example one. What we're going to do first of all is find the center direction of axis of the foci and graph the ellipse, graph the ellipse. Okay. Then label the major or minor axis. Label the major and minor axis, the foci, and the vertices. Okay? So you sketch the graph for me. I mean, you find all these components for me, and then you sketch the graph and label it completely. So this is the problem we're going to consider here. We're going to consider the problem x minus 2 squared over 4 plus y plus 3 squared over 16 equals 1. Okay? Now let's do this. First thing we're going to look at is the center. You know, to generate the center of the ellipse, you need to take opposites, right? Opposite of the number next to the x and opposite of the number next to the y. So opposite of the x Negative 2 is 2, opposite of, of positive 3 is negative 3. Direction of axis. Direction of axis. So, you take the square root of 4, which is 2. What direction does this go in? 2 is under, I mean, 4 is under the x-axis. We know the x-axis goes side to side, right? So, this number follows the direction of the axis in which it is under, which is side to side. Then I take the square root of 16, which is 4. That is under the y-axis, so that's the direction you go up and down, because the y-axis goes up and down. Okay? Now, C of the foci. C of the foci. Um, <clears throat> C of the foci You get that by uh, doing the following. C squared equals, you subtract. Since this is a plus, you do the opposite, right? 16 minus 4. 16 minus 4 is 12. C squared equals 12. Opposite of square square root. So C equals the square root of 12. Okay? In order to be able to graph it, we need an approximate figure. So fire up your calculators and compute the square root of 12, which yields 3.5 to the 10th place. So it's 3.5. What direction does this go? Up and down or side to side? Well, it goes in the direction of the bigger one, right? It follows the bigger one. So 4 up and down, that's the direction of the full side. Up and down. That's for ellipses. You don't want it outside. If I went side to side, I'll go outside the ellipse. I don't want that. All right? So let's sketch this. The quadrant is in, if I go 2 to the right and down 1, we'll take it to quadrant 3. I'm sorry, quadrant 4. So we're going to make quadrant 4 the biggest out of all of them. Okay? So shift your x, your axis to the left. 
and your x-axis slightly upwards. Okay, label your axis uh, y and x. Alright, let's graph the center first. The center is going to be 1, 2, and then you go down 1, 2, 3. Well, that's 2, negative 3 for your center. Now we're going to go up and down 4 units, 1, 2, 3, 4. Down 1, 2, 3, 4. That's the direction here. Side to side, 2 units, 1, 2. 1, 2. Connect the dots for your lips. So you're going to go... Um, 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 and... Um, that goes your lips. Okay? Now we're done with the graph and we need to label the parts of the ellipse. So uh, this longer axis right here, the longer axis is called the major axis because it's longer. Okay? So this one is the major axis. Major axis. And it is 4 times 2, 8 units long. And this right here is your minor axis minor axis and it is 4 units long your full side 3.5 units up and down so we're going to do this we're going to go 1 2 3 and then the midpoint that is f1 the first focus and then 1 2 3.5 that's f2 the second focus okay now um the vertices, where the vertices, the vertices are the end of your major axis. So this is your first vertex right there, that's your vertex. And this right here is your vertex. Okay? So that's that. So I'm going to give you some examples to try out. And then we'll continue with the more advanced problems. Alright? Alright, welcome back students. Now we're going to shift our attention to graphing ellipses in general form. Okay, ellipses that are equations are presented to us in the general form. So, um, write down the title of this part of the lesson. Uh, graphing ellipses in general form. Okay, so uh, to do this, we need to use our completing the square algorithm uh, in order to accomplish this task. So consider this example, example two. Uh, we're going to do uh, find all the relevant components, graph the label. Okay, find all relevant components. graph and label completely. Okay, so that's our task for right now. So let's do this. So what we're going to do first is uh, consider the example um, 36x squared plus 9y squared minus 144x plus 90y plus 45 equals 0. So now this one um, is not that easy to just find what the center and direction of axis are because it's in general form. We need to do some work to place it in um, standard form so we can find the relevant components easily. So to do that, we're going to uh, organize our variables Put the x's together, 36x squared with this term, minus 144x. And then the y's together, plus 9y squared, plus 90y, just as we did with the circle. And then this 45 needs to go goodbye to the other side. So that equals negative 45. Alright, so now we're going to partition our like our variables on the left side into two worlds, the x world and the y world. 
Now I need the squares to be clean. I need them by themselves so I can reach them with ease, right? So these numbers in front of them need to be factored out. So I need to factor out the 36 from here. And what does that mean? Factoring out a number means I'm dividing, right? So I divide this by 36 and divide that by 36. 36 divided by 36 is 1, so you simply have x squared minus 144 divided by 36. If you do that in your calculator, you'll get 4, 4x. Four Same story here, factor out the 9. What does that mean? That means you divide it, right? The first term and the last term by 9. So you're going to have y squared plus 10y equals negative 25. Now to complete the square here and here, we're going to do b over what? b over 2 squared. That's how you complete the square. What we're doing is for two worlds, we have the x world and the y world. b of the x world is negative 4. b of the y world is 10. So what do I do with these numbers? Divide them by 2 and square it. This one gives you 4 for the x world. For the y world, you divide this by 2, which is 5. And then when you square it, it gets 25. So these are the two terms that complete the square in both worlds, okay? So I'm going to add these two to both sides. So I'm going to have 36. And then x squared minus 4x. You add the 4 to complete the square in the x world. And then the y world plus 9, 9 times y squared plus 10y and add the 25, plus 25. And then on the right side, you have negative 45. Now what do I add on here? 4 and 25? No. We have numbers in front, so we always have to multiply by that number, okay? So 36 times 4. If you do that with a calculator, you get 144. So, plus 144. And 9 times 25 will give you what? What is 9 times 25? 9 times 25, this, times this, will give you 225. So, plus 225. Alright? So, that's what you have on the, on the right side. Make it a little bit bigger so everybody can see that is plus 225. Alright, let's talk with this side. We bring down the 36. Root the first down the last. You turn with this and square with that. And then that gives you x minus 2.2 square. Plus, bring down the 9. Square root this. Square root that. And then you're going to have y plus 5, plus 2 square, equals, and then we add all this together, you get 324. Now to put this in the, the, the standard form for ellipses, it has to be equal to 1. So what do I divide everything by to make the right side equal 1? I need to divide by 324. Okay? So I divide this side by 324. Divide this by 324, and then divide that by 324. And then your answer is going to be uh, x minus 2 squared. 36 goes into 324. If you do that in your calculator, you do 324 divided by 36, you get 9. Okay. So, uh, 36 goes here 1, 36 goes here 9 times. So you have 9 plus, how many times does 9 go into 324? 36 times, right? Because we just saw it here. So, uh, 324 divided by 9 is 36. So we're going to have y plus 5 square over 36 like that because 9 goes here 1, 9 goes here 36 times. And then on the right side it is equal to 1. Alright, let's graph this. So we're going to have find the center and the radius. So center 
center, uh, you do the opposite, right? So 2 and negative 5. Direction of axis. Direction of axis. Square root of 9 is 3. What direction? Follow the x since it's right there, side to side. Square root of 36 is 6. What direction? Y axis up and down. Okay. And then C of the full side. We're going to do C squared equals um, the bigger minus the smaller. C squared equals 27. And then C, just take the square root of 27, right? Which is approximately 27 square root is 5.2 is approximately 5.2 okay now let's go ahead and graph it 2 to the right down 5 takes you to quadrant 4 right we're going to be in quadrant 4 so um, that's the biggest one that we're going to make on our coordinate system so to make quadrant 4 sufficiently large I need to move my x I need to move my x-axis up a little bit and then move my right axis, my y-axis to the left so I can make four than four big. Alright, so let's do this. You're going to go two to the right, one, two. Then you go down one, two, three, four, five. So that's two negative five. That goes to center, right? Two down negative five, this is zero x-axis, this is your y-axis. Alright, so we're going to go up and down 6 units. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Left and right, 3 units. 1, 2, 3. Right, 1, 2, 3. So that goes your points. Connect the dots. Um. Um. Go. Okay. All right. Draw your x and y axis. I'm sorry. Your major and minor axis. This is your minor axis right there, and this is your major axis. Okay. So this is your. Uh, oh, let's put in the full side. What direction do I go? Up, down, or left, right? If I go left, right, I'm gonna go out. I'm gonna end up outside here. That's a problem. You always follow the bigger one, yes? Up and down, so the C goes up and down backwards. So starting from the center, I go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then sum. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then sum. Okay? This is F1. And this right here is F2. This is like your closer. Now, let's... Uh, Label them, okay? Label the uh, oops, sorry, what did I just say? Label the the um, axis. This is your minor axis right here, minor axis, and the length is three times two, which is six. This is your major axis, major axis, and the length is six up and down, which is twenty. Okay, the vertex is located on your uh, major axis. So this is a vertex right here. It's a vertex, and this right here, okay, is those numbers. Okay. This right here is also a vertex. Okay, so there you go. All right, not that difficult. It's very similar to what we did before. So. It's just adding some layers of complexity and then you get the result you desire. Alright? Okay. Now, try this and I'll go over it after a few minutes. Try this example number three. Example three.
same process, but let's do this one. Let's do 9x squared plus 4y squared plus 72x minus 24y plus 144 equals 0. Okay? We're going to have some minutes to try this out, and then um, I'll show you how this works. All right, let's go over this one. So uh, first thing we'll do is collect our uh, like variables together, 9x squared plus 72x plus 4y squared minus 24y. And then we move 144 to the other side. Okay. Move one, uh, move 144 to the other side. Equals negative 144. All right. So to do this, we're going to break it down the center and factor by, and uh, and then complete the square. So we can factor using the factoring trick. All right, so I need the squares to be clean. I need them by themselves, but I have some distractions here. Nine and four are in my way. I need them gone, so I need to factor them out, okay? Factoring is the same thing as dividing, so that means I'll divide the first one by nine, divide the second one by nine, and then that yields x squared plus eight x. And then this one, I will uh, factor out four also. That means I'll divide this by 4, divide that by 4, uh, we have y squared minus 6y equals negative 144. Alright, now we are ready to complete the square. How do you do that? You simply use v over 2 squared. For the x world, v of x is 8. For the y world, v of y is negative 6. What do I do with these two numbers? Divide them by 2x squared then, right? Divide this by 2x squared. Divide this by 2 and square. So those two numbers complete the square in both models. Okay? So 9x squared plus 8x. I'll insert the 16 and 16. Okay? So I derive from here. Plus 4 times y squared minus 6y. I'll add the 9. That's nine. Okay. Equals negative 144. Now, what do I add on the right side? 16 and 9? Nope. I need to multiply, right? I need to multiply them before I put it in. So, 9 times 16 will give me uh, positive 144. And then 4 times 9 will give me 36. Okay? Now, when I simplify this, I'm going to have 9 with the first and the last. x plus 4. Quantity squared plus down to 4. Uh, with the first and the last. y minus 3. Square. And then these cancel out, and then you get 36. Okay? Standard form for equation of ellipse is always equal to 1, so I need the right side here to be equal to 1, so I divide everything by whatever makes this side equal to 1, which is 36. Okay? So divide both sides by 36, everything 36. Alright, so we're going to have on the right, left side, what? Uh, x plus 4. x plus 4 over uh, what you get when you divide. x plus 4 squared over. 9 goes into 36 four times, right? Because 9 goes here 1. 9 goes here 4. Plus y minus 3 squared over 9. Why? Because 4 goes into 36 9 times. 4 goes into itself once. 4 goes into 36 9 times. Okay? equals 1. So we have it in vertex form now. It's, uh, in standard form now, so it's easy to find the center. Center is negative 4, 3. So 
direction of axis is going to be uh, square root of 4, which is 2, side to side. And then square root of 9, which is 3, up and down for the axis. And then C of the foci, you get by, you can do C equals, I mean C squared equals uh, 9 minus 4. C squared equals 5. So C is basically the square root of 5, right? Square root of 5. So what is the square root of 5? 5 square root would give me 2.2. So that's approximately 2.2. Alright, so let's sketch the graph. This is, you go to the left one, uh, 4 and up 3, so it's going to be in quadrant uh, 2. Our graph is going to be in quadrant 2, so um, let's make quadrant 2 as big as possible so that the graph fits. So move your x-axis to the right, your y-axis to the right, and move your X axis down a little bit so quadrant two is nice to do. Okay? So move it. We're gonna count one, two, three, four to the left and go up one, two, three. So three up. You get the center. Okay? Now um let's graph it. You're gonna go the side to side two. So one, two, and then one, two, and then up and down. Three. One, two, three. One, two, three. So thank you to your lips. Connect the dots. Um, yeah, thank you to your lips. Alright, and then label. Minor axis right there, major axis right here. Both sides 2.2 units in the direction of the bigger one, which is up and down. So one, two, and then a little bit gives you F1, and then once you down a little bit, it gives you F2. This is your minor axis, which is uh, 40 units long. And uh, this is your major axis, which is uh, 6 units long up and down. Okay? The vertices are the tips of your major axis, so this is a vertex. The vertex right here. And that also is a vertex. Alright, so that's that. Thanks for uh, paying attention to this presentation. Remember, it's already uploaded online for your viewing pleasure. Okay, thank you.